I want to share about Christ in you. What does it mean to have Christ in you? I want us to understand something that, that the Christ in you, scripture makes us understand when Paul was talking to the Galatian church, he said it was the mystery that has been hidden from the generations to generations. He said it's the greatest mystery. He said this was the revelation that God called him to preach was Christ in you. That is the revelation that God has called Paul to teach to the Gentiles. Christ in you. I wanted to show something to you in scripture. I want to read the scripture to us. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Colossians 1 27. I'm going to read that quickly for us. Um, Bible says to them, which is to the church or to the Colossians or to us, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery which is Christ in you the hope of, of glory Colossians 1 27 it says to them God wills to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory Christ in me, scripture says, is a secret that has been kept hidden from the foundations of the world. God hid this mystery. It's a mystery. You know, the mysteries of God, scripture makes us to understand, are the hidden things of God. They are the hidden secrets of God. One of those secrets is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ living in and making his abode in us, in human flesh, in the church, is the mystery we're talking about today. God hid this mystery for us and not from us. He hid it for our own good. But the Bible says to them he has made known the hidden mystery. So it's not hidden for us anymore. It has been revealed. The secret, the hidden mystery of Christ in us has been revealed to us, the body of Christ. So, what does it mean to have Christ living on the inside of us? The Bible makes us understand that that same Jesus that was crucified on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, that same Jesus lives on the inside of us. That's the mystery. That is why he had to die on the cross. Because if he had not died, it would not be possible for Christ to to live on the inside of us. That word Christ, what does it mean? It's the anointed one. What does the anointed one mean? In simple, plain English, or just simple understanding, Christ in you is the anointed one and his anointing living and dwelling on the inside of you. That is what we're talking about. We're talking about the anointed one and his anointing living and dwelling on the inside of you. How does Christ dwell in you today? Christ dwells in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you makes it possible for Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, to live on the inside of you. That's the whole mystery. The mystery is the anointed one, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. So what does it mean to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you? The Bible makes us understand that when you died, when Christ died, you died. And not just dying, but you resurrected with Jesus. When you got born again, as the Bible says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have now become new. Now you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Scripture says, it's no longer I who lives. Galatians 2.20 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I. I who live but Christ lives on the inside of me the reason why this is so powerful and so important is that we are not ordinary this is where many believers make the mistake you got born again does you see you got born again you didn't join a church when you got born again you didn't join a religious organization so just saying a sinner's prayer doesn't get you born again I know that may offend some people's theology. I'm sorry to offend your theology. But just saying a prayer doesn't get you born again. 
you get born again when Jesus becomes the Lord of your life. Have you meditated upon that? What does it mean for Jesus to be Lord over your life? What does that mean? That is what being a child of God, that's what being born again is all about. That Jesus is now my Lord. If you go back and study the, the Greek of that word, when it says Jesus is now your Lord, or Jesus is your Lord, it means he has the final authority over your life. You are not, your life no longer belongs to you. What does that mean in plain English? When Jesus says jump, you respond, how high should I jump? When Jesus says go, your response is, Lord, where do I go?